Well, good morning and welcome to McLaren Falls. I'm out here with Jared. I'll post some information down below for him. Check him out on Instagram and YouTube. There's Jared down there a little lower in the falls, getting a different section of the falls. Say hi. Yeah, the falls are uh, at low flow right now. Um, many times a year, the dam upriver is opened up and high flow comes through. It's right up the river right there. That will be full at about 10 o'clock where Jared's standing is gonna be wet. And there's gonna be 14 cubic meters per second coming down. Right now it's less than one. All of the water that you see coming down this river is actually coming down. It's coming down this side of the river. It's not blocked by the dam. But over here, this side will definitely have a lot of flow. In about another hour and a half, there will be heaps of kayakers here uh, wanting to go down river to check out what's going on with the rapids and to have some fun. Um, but right now the dam is used for electrical power generation and yeah, the dam is closed and so there's really low flow. What I'm here for today is to do some time blending. I've talked about this in a previous video. I'll link to it up here. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about um, how I do waterfalls. My waterfalls are usually a composite. I've got a slow shutter speed and a fast shutter speed and I blend those together to give me the texture in the fall that I'm really looking for. Um, so, join me right beside a road. Join me and we'll uh, explore this. About half the video will be out here at McLaren Falls and then the other half will be back home in the office on the computer. up for my first shot here. I've got this aspect of the falls right here going on and I'm just going to do a test shot right now just to see how things are going. I might need to put a polarizer on. I'm also going to have to definitely put on a three stop maybe even a six stop to slow things down but right now all I want to do is just do some tests kind of figure some things out. I'm going to change this from horizontal to vertical All right, so I've got this main part of the falls, but there's also some other stuff that comes down through here um, that I want to get a hold of. So rotate just a little bit. Make sure we're level. Aim it down just a little bit. Zoom in just a little bit more. I'm gonna turn this focus peaking off so that we can see a little better what's going on. Yeah, that looks pretty good as far as the first setup goes. But my first shot, you know, we'll take that and we'll see how it looks. Two second timer as normal. Take a look at this. Sideways. Yeah, the rocks look good. Water looks good. Coming down through here, this little area looks good. All right, okay, so what I do for time blending on my waterfalls is I first set up and I do a really fast shutter speed to catch the individual water drops, to catch the individual textures. And so I'm going to take my ISO and I'm gonna jump that up quite a bit. And you can see that's gonna blow it out. And then I'm gonna take my 
shutter speed. I'm going to take my shutter speed and I'm going to speed it up a lot to get it back into a good a good image. It's not blown out, not underexposed. You can see I'm about two thirds of a stop under, but that's all right. I'm at f11 so that I can try to get everything in focus. Two second timer. Take that, and then if we zoom in on this. You can see the individual drops, the individual splashes, all that kind of stuff. And that may not be fast enough. That's one two fiftieth of a sec or one two hundredth of a second. So I'm gonna take that up one more notch and take this up one more notch to one two fiftieth of a second. Focus, two second timer, take that shot. Zoom in again. Yeah, I like that one better. Lots of individual drops. All right, so that looks all right, but what I want to do now is I want to put on a polarizer and see how that looks, because there's some sheen on the rocks over there. So, got my case filters. Put this on, and that's gonna knock it down. About a stop, a stop and a third. But, if I take this polarizer, and you can see what's happening to this main rock right in the middle. This is going to get darker as I polarize this. And even with a fully overcast day, we're going to, the polarizer is going to do some work for us. And I like that a little better. Let's get some sheen on the rock, just a tiny bit. Kind of like that. All right, so we're back to 1, 200. So F-stop up again. All right, ISO where we want it, 2500, F11, 1 200th of a second. We'll work with that. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my ISO and I'm gonna drop it all the way back down to 100. I'm gonna take my shutter speed down to where we're properly exposed. And we're at about a sixth of a second. And if you were doing a single image, at a sixth of a second, that probably would turn out to be a pretty good image. But what I want is something much slower. I want the nice streaky lines coming down through the fall so that I can uh, blend two images together. So I'm going to go ahead and take that image just to show you what I'm talking about. And so we have something to talk about on the screen back in the office. But if we zoom in on this, we've got some streaks, we've got some splashes. right it's looking pretty good but I'll show you okay back out of that get my case three stop stick that on the front I'm not going to move the polarizer I want it to stay where it is and now we're three stops added to it so take this down to a good proper exposure and we're at 1.6 seconds Take that shot. And then what we're gonna see is a lot more, um, a lot more of the fall because more of those streaks are captured. And so there's a lot more of these straight lines coming straight down the falls. And then back home, what we'll do is we'll blend that all together into a single image where we put the two together. So. Again, I'm not worried about that ISO being, I'm not so worried about that ISO being set so high because I'm not using any of the shadow image, any shadows of the image anyway. I don't care about noise. I'm gonna be using the white stuff in the image, so it'll be good to go.
welcome to the office. We're going to do some editing in both Lightroom and Photoshop of images that we took today. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to focus on today was time blending and making sure that I get the waterfall images that I like. So let's take a look at some of the images and let's see what's going to happen. I've already imported them into Lightroom and during my import they automatically get a couple of presets, they get some lens correction, they get some calibration, they get a tone curve and some sharpening added to them um, that I want. Um, so taking a look at this first image, we are going to zoom in, and not that much, and we're going to take a look at. So in this image, you can see that this waterfall, really fast shutter speed, so lots of nice dots, lots of nice individual water drops, which I like. If it's a really powerful waterfall, big majestic waterfall, that's all I really wanna see. Um, in this image, with a really slow shutter speed, you can see that all those water drops are gone and all we have are streaks that show where the water drops are falling consistently. So lots of water drops in these areas where it's bright white, very few water drops in these areas where it's thin and a little more uh, string-like. So what I want to do, let's put this back where it was. What I want to do first is I want to go through and give some basic adjustment to this. I'm going to increase my exposure just a, a, a bit. I want to add just a little bit of white. Not so much that I blow anything out, but I want to add just a little bit of white and I want to take away just a little bit of the black. I want to increase my shadows a tiny bit. I want to see what's going on in this area but I also want to take my highlights down just a little bit because they're going to impact what's going on with that white water. Texture, I want to see the texture in the rock. I also want to see the texture in the water, so I'm going to increase that a fair bit. I'm going to give it just a tiny bit of clarity. Add vibrance. Vibrance increases the look of your duller muted colors. So some of the oranges and yellows that are in these rocks are going to come out. And then just a tiny bit of saturation added in for good measure. Color graining. I'm going to warm up my highlights. I'm going to cool off my shadows, leave that alone, and then hit into detail. And on sharpening, I'm going to do some masking on that. So right here, if you click on masking and hold down Alt at the same time, just like in Photoshop, white reveals, black conceals. So wherever you see white, that's going to get sharpened. Where you don't see white, no sharpening. So I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more. I just want to see the edges there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Yep, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to control, click on both images, and I'm going to synchronize them. So sync, check all, synchronize, and now they both have the exact same settings. Then I'm going to right click on either one of them, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. That way I get the two layers. Um, and not two separate images in two separate files. I get two layers in one file. So take Lightroom, or excuse me, take Photoshop just a second for it to open up. And there we go. And I'm going to zoom in quite a bit. Again, I want to kind of see what's going on with this fast shutter speed. So the first thing I want to do, yep, that's where I want to look, is I want to click on both layers, go to edit, auto align layers. I'm going to leave it on auto because I don't have any kind of panorama. Once that's finished, we can actually start working. So I'm going to click on this top layer. That's my fast shutter speed and beneath it is my slow shutter speed. So on my fast shutter speed, I want to add a mask. So I hit mask. And you've got a white mask, which allows everything to come through. White reveals black conceals. If I hit control I, then that black, that mask turns black and everything on that layer is concealed. Now, what I want to do is I want to do some painting. So I want to bring out just some of those individual water drops from the upper layer onto this lower layer. So I want to bring some of the fast shutter speed water droplets into the slow shutter speed streakiness. So take a look at my brush up here. 
Let me put these on so I can read my screen. Yeah, 40%. Yeah, yep. That all looks good. So, got my brush. Now I'm going to use Wacom Tablet to do some painting. So, come over here and you can see just by doing a couple of strokes right here in this little area, you can see some of that texture of the individual water drops coming through, which is what I want to see. So I'm going to put some right there. And I'm going to end up doing this whole thing. That's a little bit too much. Control Z. And I don't need all of it to come through. I just want some of it to come through. So I'm not painting everywhere in there. Just a little bit here and there. And even in this bright white area that looks like there's no texture, on the underlying layer there's some texture so we can add that in. Right. Now, if you're looking at this and you think it's a little bit overdone, you can always go to, because you're on this layer, you can go and the layer mask itself is highlighted, you can go to opacity and you can drag that around and you can see that that's going to take some of that op streakiness, or excuse me, the dots away. So I'm going to drop my opacity down just a little bit, right about there. I think that looks pretty good. And then if I hit um, control zero, that's going to give me full view. And you can see now that streakiness is still there of the slow speed, but now you've got some more texture to it. And I think that looks pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit control S to save this file. And as soon as it's saved, we're gonna close this. And when we close it, what's gonna happen is it's going to give us a new image right here in Lightroom automatically. And that's our new image. So if I zoom in, there's our new image. We've got just a little bit of texture in those streaks, which is what I like to see. So now I would finish up editing this. I would take this down and make it just a little bit smaller. Have that water exiting out the bottom. That looks pretty good. Close that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Then I'd go through, do some masking, um, add in some highlights, add in some shadow, uh, just to really give this a three-dimensional look and make it really kind of pop. I'll show you the finished image here in the video. Hopefully you got something out of today's video on time blending and getting to take two different images and merge them together in Photoshop. And I hope that you've found it enjoyable. If you have, give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel because there'll be more of this stuff coming out. And I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.